I know we're always looking ahead, seeing what the new year will bring, but one of the most important things you can do this year is to look back and see how far you've come. So in today's video, it is a marathon of all of the DIY home project makeover room refreshes that we were able to accomplish in 2022. This is also a few of the most watched of my videos. So that includes the laundry room DIY makeover, our living room refresh, our backyard makeover where we built in a homemade sandbox, our toddler room shared bedroom makeover and the nursery. So not only do you get some DIY room makeover slash refreshes, you also get tons of deep cleaning and organizing ideas. So because this is a marathon, it is a compilation of those five videos that we accomplished throughout the year. Each space has its own unique and special touch to it. So not only that, I was pregnant throughout this entire year. Well, it felt like it, but all the way up until August. So doing some of these projects was not an easy task. But if you are looking to do some home projects in the next year, then hopefully this video will give you tons of ideas. My name is Michelle. I am a mom of three now, and you'll probably be seeing my husband, Chris, in a lot of these videos helping out. We are not professional DIYers. We just Google, YouTube, whatever project we need done and figure out how to do it. I usually just get a vision or an idea, and then Chris helps me bring that project to life. But if you are not already subscribed, then I would love for you to click that red subscribe button because I have a lot more projects that I want to accomplish this year. And I would absolutely love for you to join me on those projects along the way. We tend to just figure it out as we go. I'm not perfectly organized. I'm not perfectly clean. And you know, this is just me mapping my journey and showing you guys that you don't have to have it all be perfect to get any of this stuff done. My goal is to inspire you to just get started. I'm a true believer that you can accomplish anything you set your mind to. So I hope this video helps you get started. So let's not waste any more time. Not all DIY projects have to be hard and expensive. My husband and I are not professional DIYers, but we did bring this space to life. Laundry rooms can often be neglected spaces and places that just keep a lot of clutter. When designing and redoing a new space, I heard from a YouTuber, Lisa Holt Designs, who is a professional interior designer, is to start with the envelope of the room, meaning take everything out and start with the floors, the walls, and the ceiling. So that is exactly what we are going to accomplish in today's video. The first thing that we will do is take everything out of this space. I'll be giving it a pretty good deep clean, and then we will be ripping out all of this old tile putting in brand new, funky, cool, fun tile, and also adding board and batten to the walls. I asked you guys over on my Instagram to help me pick a color for this wall, and I did choose the one that all of you guys voted for. The last thing that we will be doing is adding a new light fixture, and make sure you're subscribed because in next week's video, I will be doing a massive declutter, organizing, and then finishing up decorating the space. If you are new here, then welcome. I'm so glad to have you here and coming along on this journey with me. My name is Michelle and I typically do lots of cleaning and organizing motivation. And recently we decided to do a few DIY projects within our home. 
You'll be seeing Chris, my husband, help out a lot in these DIY projects, starting here in the laundry room. My first thought for the laundry room was to make it more functional. We actually have a pretty small laundry room with not a lot of storage space and no cabinets. If you've been watching my videos for a while now, then you'll know that the majority of the time my laundry room looks like those pictures on the right. Now I could go on and on, but I think that you get the point. Pretty disorganized, not functional, and just not really working out for us. When I was thinking of ideas on how to make this space more functional, I could have just gone to the organization process, which I will do in next week's video, but I kind of got the idea to just redo the space and make it so much more fun and obviously also give it a pretty good clean. Now I admit the tile, the walls, the light fixture, none of that is terrible, but we have been in this house almost seven years and we are wanting to change some things up. And as you grow, your style kind of changes as well. So that was our whole idea with this. Another thing we want to do is completely renovate our bathroom. And we figured that since this space is so much smaller, we can kind of practice in this area and then work on that next if all of this goes well. So the first thing we're doing here is moving out our washer and dryer and we do have to be prepared to have um, it not working for a few days and I do admit that the laundry does pile up quickly. I'm, I put these little space things on the bottom. It's specific to moving furniture so that you can slide large furniture without scraping up your floors. The total cost of all of the materials, the tile, the wood, the paint, everything we used was about $375 and it did take us, I want to say around four days to complete. But let's get started with cleaning up this laundry room first. So as I finish up cleaning out this space, I didn't do a humongous deep clean on the floors because we're about to start ripping them out. Um, Chris is getting started with removing some of the edging on the floor. Hopefully I can really pronounce and say everything correctly. But um, the first thing that he did was take everything out and try and break a small little piece here on the edge with a hammer. So we did go out and get a rotary hammer drill and we use the tile chisel which is the attachment on the end in order to really get all the tile out if we were to sit here and hammer all of this up it would have taken days so chris kind of prepared and went and got that now we were planning on doing more projects throughout the house maybe our guest bathroom and then like we said our main bathroom so that's why we went out and invested in that so there you can see the rotary hammer drill and the tile chisel that he's putting underneath the tile in order to break it up. So initially we thought that this was going to take like an entire day 
to pull up all of the tile, but it just took him about a half of a day. So it came up a lot easier than we initially anticipated, which actually saved us a lot of time. Once you get the chisel underneath, you can start pulling out big pieces. Now, obviously this depends on the type of tile that you have. If you are going to be ripping up tile, um, which really depends on the amount of time that it'll take. I was knocked down, heard the countdown through the haze in the face of defeat. So I ended up grabbing a box and I am packing up all of the larger pieces that he's pulling up and I'm taking them out to the trash can. We're also using a shop vac to vacuum up all of the dust. You'll see later on that this does make a pretty big mess with dust because not only are we trying to chisel up the tile, we're also trying to chisel up all of the glue so that we can get to the concrete underneath. Now that we have all of the tile and mortar all chiseled up, then you can see how much of a mess that it makes just carrying things in and out of there. Our bedroom is also a mess because our bedroom is right out of there. Um, but the next thing we decided to work on before laying the tile was the board and batten walls. I wanted to add some kind of dimension, something a little bit different to these walls opposed to just painting them. And because we've done board and batten before, which we redid the whole wall in our dining room, and I'll link that video down below as well, um, we decided to kind of do a similar concept here. I wanted to keep it as simple as possible, but also have it make a statement. I feel like because a laundry room isn't something that a lot of your guests or a lot of other people see besides just you, then you can really go funky, do bold colors or do whatever you desire and not worry about it not matching with the rest of your home. But that can also just depend on where your laundry room is located in your home. For the board and batten walls, the one that we are putting up here on top is a one by four board. The boards that are going to end up going vertically down are going to be one by three boards. And then at the very top, we add this like chair rail type board, which is a one by two. For the placement of the very top horizontal boards, we just aligned it with the shelf that was already there. Once we have all of the measurements in the places that we want the vertical run boards, which are the one by three boards, then we're just using some nail glue to actually stick it to the wall in place, make sure everything's level and even, and then we'll use the nail gun to nail the boards in place. In my opinion, the hardest part of doing board and batten walls is getting all of the measurements correct and getting everything completely level. Now, they say that you should always measure twice and cut once because if you cut a board too short, then you actually have to go back to the store and get a brand new board, which we almost had to do. But luckily, Chris got all of the measurements exact, so everything fit pretty perfectly in place. <laughs> Next step was to pick out a paint color for the wall. So I went over to Sherman Williams and got three different samples. I laid out a couple tiles just to see. The first one was Evergreen Fog, which is Sherman Williams 2022 color of the year. The next one was a darker color Urban Bronze, which was actually Sherman Williams 2021 color of the year. And the third one was an Escape Gray, which actually was more of a green. It was right next to the Evergreen Fog, which I was actually going for a green color but I was kind of liking darker colors so I threw in that one dark color just to see what it would look like. So that is the first color that is the evergreen fog that I'm testing out that's actually the lightest color and after painting almost every single room in our house so far watching countless 
videos on how to paint and painting tips. The one or two tips that always stick with me that I always remember is whenever you are sampling paint to make sure that you paint um, a sample spot in every single wall in that room. So I'm actually doing that. I'm painting in, in one of the walls and then I go back and paint a whole nother side wall. The next tip they say is to make sure that it dries 100% and have it in the lighting that you're going to have it. So if you paint like during nighttime and you just have your um, light on opposed to like having it with the full sunlight, then make sure that you look at it throughout the day so that you can see what it looks like in every single lighting. Now in our laundry room, we have no windows. There's absolutely no sunlight coming in. So I didn't have to worry about that, but I did paint every single wall and I let it dry overnight. Uh, like I said, I asked you guys over on Instagram to give me some help on picking a color. So thank you for everyone that decided. Now I don't typically lean towards like green colors. It wasn't really something that I ever thought I would do. I'm more of like a neutral person and I typically stick to neutrals because I always get nervous if I go too, too bold, then I'm not gonna like it like in the next few months and then I'll have to go back and repaint it. So the thing about the laundry room is that I kept seeing all these Pinterest colors of green colors and like adding like botanical prints and our pictures and things like that. So it made it more earthy. So that's why I was leaning actually more towards a green, even though it's not my typical style. Um, I just really, really loved the way that these looked in these Pinterest pictures. Now I had to throw in a dark color just to kind of get an idea and get the feel of it. And overall, I like the color Urban Bronze, which I mentioned was Sherman Williams 2021 color of the year, but just not for this space. So I, do, I know a lot of people voted for that color, but the reason why I decided not to go with that color was because it is too dark for this small of a space. So typically darker colors are going to make your space feel a lot smaller and enclosed. And because there's also no natural sunlight coming through whatsoever, it would have made it feel even more dark. So again, I would probably like this color for another area, but just for this exact um, space, I decided not to do that one. But while I'm letting those colors dry and I decide on a color the next day, I still have so much organizing to do. We have declutter in our bedroom that has been there for days and it takes me like a whole separate video to declutter, organize, get new things, make this space a little bit more functional. So actually in next week's video is when I'm doing the entire decluttering and organizing of the laundry room. But let's go ahead and start finishing up this space. So as we begin tiling the space, what we did not do was fully level the floor. So I saw on a YouTuber, Stephanie at home, she bought these little yellow levelers so that you don't have to level the floor before you lay the mortar. You actually, um, those little things actually help level the floor as you're laying the tile down. We drew a line right down the center of the laundry room from the doorway and that is where we're starting. We went back and forth a little bit whether or not to lay the tile diagonally, but overall I just liked the pattern just straight up and down and it made it so much easier because the only cuts that we had to make were actually um, along the sides and closer to the doorway. We are using the 1 and 1 16th spacers which are very, very thin. And um, the reason why I wanted to go super thin was because I wanted the pattern to flow evenly without a whole bunch of grout space in between. We purchased about 80 square feet of tile and we got the tile from Floor and Decor. We are using the 13 by 13 inch square tiles and it was about $1.39 per square foot. Not used to this. I don't know how to act, don't know how to adapt to this situation Not used to this, no I'm not I better let myself Give in to love, believe in us No matter what it does to my heart Not used to this, no I'm not It was like if we were to waste These moments The light poets to me We 
are using a tile saw to make all of the tile cuts, which we purchased at Home Depot. Not used to this, not prepaid. Not used to this, not prepaid. Not prepaid. It was like if we were to wait. So one of the biggest things that has held us back from doing a lot more DIY projects is really just prioritizing time to be able to do them. Chris and I are both working and our weekends tend to always just get booked up. So finding time to actually prioritize and start these DIY projects is really our hardest thing. So the thing that I like to do the most is always have a plan, whether I'm starting a DIY project or just an organizing project, I always have to do a little bit of research and make a plan. So in this space, I first had to see what was my biggest pain point. And for me, it was always having clothes on the floor, always having laundry piled up, and then always walking into a big thing of clutter on that top shelf. I also just found the space plain and dull, and I didn't really want to spend a lot of time in there. So when making a plan, I focused on my three biggest pain points, which were it was dysfunctional, it was disorganized, and it was dull. So when planning this space, we picked out fun and affordable tile and also a fun paint color. It took some time one weekend to go actually pick out the tile and then also pick out the paint. So the next weekend we fully dedicated to this project. So once the tile is put in, it takes about 24 hours to dry. And the next thing that you have to do is kick off all of the levelers because they're pretty set in to the thin set. We had to wait until about Sunday mid-afternoon before we started putting in the grout. I was hoping to have the whole project done by Sunday night so we could go ahead and move the washer and dryer back in and I can start washing clothes again. But you know, with some of these projects, it always takes a few more days than, than anticipated. So this is Sunday night where Chris is laying the grout. So the key with laying the grout is that you have to just do it in small sections because you don't want it to cure on the actual tile because it is going to be very, very difficult to get off if it is dried on the tile. And it does dry very fast. So this step didn't take very long at all. I wanna say it took him about an hour, maybe two hours at the absolute most. And we ended up going with a dark gray grout color. That was just the grout color that they had in the sample at the store. So we just thought that we liked it. It looks great. And with darker grout colors, I feel like it's so much easier to clean or shall I say not clean because you don't know when it is super dirty. Our other grout color was very light and you could see areas where it kind of stained darker. Now, because I don't clean our grout like weekly or super often, then to me, it's just better to go with darker grout color. But because the tile is also really light, it just looked good against the tile color. Now, as I was saying a little bit before, whenever you're thinking about redesigning a room is to really think about where, what are those main pain points and then kind of come up with a plan to how you can solve those pain points. Now, I've already said this a couple of times before, but in next week's video, I'm focusing on the next two pain points, which are the disorganization and the dysfunctional. So I'm gonna figure out how to make this space a little bit more functional and also way more organized. So make sure you are subscribed so not only do you see the DIY transformation, but you also see the organization transformation. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you're getting some ideas to transform some of your spaces, or if you've just completed a transformation, let me know what your next project is. So the next step is to finish painting the space and the paint color that we all decided on was the Sherman Williams Escape Gray. It was the lightest of the three choices, definitely has a more of a green tint with a little bit of gray mixed into it. And I think it was the best choice that was the earthy look that I was going for. We 
decided not to paint the entire laundry room. We're just painting up to that one by two board. This will make the area that we did the board and batten on the walls really stand out and kind of contrast with the color of paint that we already have. Now I may go back and paint the top portion of it white later on, but for now I just painted the bottom section. The one thing that I'm still waiting on is for Chris to come in and do the caulking on the sides of the board and also sand and putty all of the nail holes on the boards. So what I'm doing is painting the bigger sections first and then once he comes in and completes all of that, then I will go back and paint all of the wood panels. Take you off, I came in way too strong, cannot keep it low key. Got me drugged, your pheromones hit the roof, auto your taste. It's really a bad reception out there, where are you heading? Why ain't gravity pulling you in closer to me? Now Chris is finishing up all of the caulking on the sides of the boards. We will let it set and then I will finish painting. So he is using the DAP Dynaflex window, door, and trim sealant. This just helps blend the panels into the wall so it gives it a nice smooth edge. And when you're painting, it doesn't make it so that there's like a gap in between where the wall placement is and where the wood panels are. Now once the caulking or the sealant has completely dried, then I can go in and finish painting the rest of the boards. It's been a few days now and I am determined to finish up this project. The laundry room isn't something that we can really procrastinate on because like I mentioned several times before, the longer that this project takes, then the longer, the more clothes that we have just sitting there waiting to be washed. But this is kind of a nifty tool that I got a really long time ago. It helps with the edging so that you don't have to tape up the sides. You can dip it in the paint and it has a straight edge and the paint will kind of go evenly around the edges without having to tape. Now, does it work perfectly every single time? Not really. So if you're very, very particular about making sure that the paint doesn't get on the side, then I would consider just taping it off instead of using this little paint tool. But finally, we have finished the DIY portion of it and it turned out absolutely amazing. So now before we do anything else, the goal is to get the washer and dryer back in, get them back in commission, and then we will switch out the light fixture. So in the several days that it took to complete this project, I also began to get a few things to help with the dysfunction of it and also the organization of it. So most of that stuff I will be sharing, like I said several times in next week's video, but I'm just giving you guys a little sneak peek here. We used to hang around town pretty late. I spent the week thinking about it next day. If you watched last week's video, then you will have noticed that we switched out all of the pendant lights in our kitchen and therefore we decided to reuse the lights that were there. So this is one of the areas where we're using one of the pendant lights. But now that we are coming to the end, let me give you guys the full before and after. And if you're not subscribed already, I would love for you to go ahead and subscribe. from my window sun's coming up like the day before you're like a stone on my pillow i don't make a sound when i shut the door oh, you don't have to wake up
So before I can jump into this living room makeover, I have to start with the basics, which are just cleaning up the room and keeping it clean enough to actually change out some things. A lot of the times our living room looks just like this. So I will take you step-by-step step through the process of picking up, deep cleaning, taking everything out of the living room, rearranging, putting up a new rug. And we also ordered a brand new light. So we were actually taking this one down, moving it and putting it in um, the front entryway and replacing this light. So you probably also saw a balloon stuck up there since Valentine's Day. We will finally get that balloon down and refresh this room. We don't have any plans to move in the next couple of years. So my goal is to change out a few things piece by piece and hopefully that will give it a new feel without actually physically moving locations. But if this is your first video to ever watch from me, then welcome. I'm glad you clicked on this video. This is probably one of my favorites to ever make because there's just so much that goes on. I do try and give you guys a lots of real life inspiration and not just motivation. So in all aspects of your life, but especially in the home. I have two young daughters and I am 25 weeks pregnant with baby number three. So this week's project is pretty challenging. So we'll see how well that we do, but let's go ahead and get started. You think you know me. Say I'm as cold hearted as they come. You think I'm slowly. As I'm getting started picking up, I'm excited to share with you the Yeedy brand new VAC2 Pro. Some really neat and awesome features about this robot vacuum are that you can download the app directly to your phone and control the settings through the app. Another really cool feature is that the Yeedy VAC2 Pro has a smart visual mapping and navigation. So after you've downloaded the app, basically you will allow the vacuum to run one full cycle so that it can map out your entire house. So the next time that you use the vacuum, it will memorize that route accordingly and also cleans in neat rows without missing any spots. One of the other things that I love about this vacuum is that it also has an oscillating mopping system. So all you do is fill up the canister with some water, attach the mop to the vacuum, and go ahead and begin the cycle. It cleans in neat rows and also picking up contaminated areas within just one pass. If I go over the area with a paper towel, then you can see that it left no residue behind. So what makes this vacuum incredibly unique is the oscillating mopping system, which basically mimics the hand motion scrubbing back and forth. It can fit under tight areas of your house, but also has a 3D obstacle avoidance technology. So you don't have to worry about picking up toys or cleaning your house before you turn it on because it can detect obstacles in the way and move accordingly. So while I was getting some more cleaning done, I turned on the vacuum feature and it picked up a ton of dust. All you have to do is empty the tray out and see how much dirt that it picked up in just a short amount of time. There is also an auto dustpan emptying option, which is sold separately. So be sure to check out my link below to purchase the Yeedy VAC2 Pro. Trying to get away from this life I'm living Same old things every day Wanna change this feeling Wasting no more time Don't care about what you're saying Try to keep me down No time for all your playing Yeah, even if you doubt me now You should know I don't care about The things you say So 
I'm just gonna finish cleaning up the kitchen and then tomorrow is when I actually start the living room deep clean. But just to give you an idea of my thought process around this, and if you haven't been following previous videos, is that the first thing that we changed out were the pendant lights. And I'll show you a little bit later on what they looked like before and what they look like now in case you hadn't seen that. And then of course, once those pieces come in, then I kind of see what they look like and then I pick out a couple more pieces, which is what I'm doing in this video with the new rugs and the new chandelier. Next, I do have some bar stools that were on back order. Now those are a little bit more modern. So kind of mixing this collectic look with some modern pieces, some industrial, some kind of traditional is why I'm taking it one step at a time and hoping that it all goes together and looks good in the end. So these are what the pendant lights looked like before we changed them a month or so ago. And this is what they currently look like. So we went with a darker kind of more industrial look. Now I'm moving on the next day where I'm gonna work on getting the couch deep cleaned and vacuumed out. Now I also know I'm gonna get questions about why am I buying new this? Why am I buying new that? Well, my whole goal is to change out a lot of stuff in this area. So that's why it seems like, oh, I bought this, I'm buying this, is because that is my goal. We've been in this house for seven years and this is all furniture from the day we moved in. So I'm just kind of at that seven year itch where I'm ready to freshen things up. I'm ready to change things out. I'm ready to make the investment to do that. So it feels like a new space, like I said before, without actually having to physically move spaces. Now that I think about it, I think this is the longest house I've ever lived in in my entire life. So usually when I move houses and I'm like, oh, I need to get stuff to fit that new space. Not that I just, not that I get everything new. It's just that you just need need different things that may, may fit that space better. So I also enjoy home decor. It just takes me a little bit longer to make a decision and make the commitment that this is going to be the right piece that I need for this space. Now keep in mind this by no means means that you need to go out and feel obligated to get anything new. This is just, maybe it's my pregnancy, maybe it's something that's just like triggered me to be like, okay, I, I feel like I'm ready to change up this space. Now my more expensive investment pieces like my couch, I'm not getting rid of, I'll probably hang on to that for until it falls to threads. But some of the things that I got more on a budget, I guess you can say, um, that haven't held up as well is more or less what I feel like I want to switch out. But I'm curious to know, how often do you mix things up in your space or change things out? Do you kind of have the same things that you've always had, kind of like how I did, or do you change things up a lot more often? Leave me a comment down below and let me know. We've been driving around, singing songs way too loud because we wanna So I don't think that the couch is terrible as far as like dirtiness, but I do have of course dog hair and there are some popcorn kernels in there. So Chris, my husband and Sailor, my four year old, every night they typically make a bag of popcorn and that's how we like sit on the couch and relax. Um, I like popcorn, but I'm not like one to eat it every single day, but typically that's how they get all these popcorn kernels stuck in between the couch. But anyway, my goal for this day is to just get everything kind of cleaned up under the couch. And then the next day is when, or whenever the next time I come back to this spot is, is when I'm gonna take all of the cushions off the couch and wash them. Now that to me is like a workout in itself because it takes forever to do. So I have had comments like, you have so much energy, how do you get so much done? And my secret is, is that the, these videos are sped up times four and it's all done within at least three or more days. 
And to be completely honest, I hardly ever get everything done in one day. It's always a combination of several days. And typically I have to go back and look at how many out different outfits I'm wearing to determine how long, how many days I worked on making this one video. One funny thing is I didn't think that I would have enough footage to make this video and I ended up having like five to six hours of footage. So I tried to condense it as much as I possibly could, but this still ended up being a crazy long video. So if you stick around for the whole thing, wow, I appreciate you. And I'll try my hardest to keep you motivated throughout the whole thing. So these cushions come off so they can be washed and as you can see that is actually part of an avocado stain as well as who knows what else is on this couch so the girls we don't eat at dirt at the couch typically besides the popcorn that i mentioned but sometimes like dirty hands dirty faces just jumping on the couch i don't know things who knows what half of this stuff is it's just that it gets messy Typically washing these cushions helps get a lot of the stuff out. I don't have anything that is just hardcore permanently stained. Um, I know that it's kind of like iffy to have a light colored couch with young kids and a dog and you know all of the things but we, I bought it before we had kids and that was just the color that I wanted and it's so far it's worked out pretty well. The only thing I will say is that the arms of the couch where you can't take off the cushions and wash them is where I tend to have difficulty getting stains out. Now I've used um, like shampooers, I've used like spot cleaners, but there are still some spots that I wish I could clean a lot better. Um, other than that, that's really the only complaint I've had about having a, a lighter colored couch with a lot of things going on in the house. Now, when I was vacuuming, I didn't, I forgot to mention that I was using, I used a combination between the Tinco cordless vacuum and the Dyson cordless vacuum. So a lot of these cordless vacuums will come with different parts. Um, and I do get asked about like what types of vacuum I use. So I feel like the Dyson is super powerful on the couch. I like the attachment piece that comes with it. Um, it gets a lot of the dog hair off. So a lot of times the dog hair will get on blankets or pillows um, and then it'll just, you know, get on the couch. And for like pet hair and things like that, the Dyson cordless vacuum with like the handheld attachment is what I feel like is the most powerful and getting pet hair off the couch. Now, while all the cushions are washing and it takes extra long because I do have to wash them in gentle cycle and also um, delicate dry, it just takes so much longer. Um, I'm going to go ahead and shampoo up the rug. So the reason why I'm shampooing up the rug is because I'm going to give it to my sister. So I want it to be like nice and clean before I give it to her um, before then I replace this rug. Now I'm using the Bissell Pet Pro Shampooer. And one thing with this rug that we had gotten is that it is so thin. Um, that was one complaint I had with it. I liked the design, I liked everything about it. The living room rug is just a high traffic area and I used to not hardly ever switch them out. And then I think I went like two years and switched it out and then I had just bought this one last year. And you can see a little bit where the discoloration is, where the coffee table was. So when looking for a new rug, I wanted something a little bit thicker. And um, I asked you guys on my Instagram a couple weeks ago, you guys voted and I did end up getting one you voted for, which is actually gonna go in my um, kitchen runner area. And then I ordered the other one for this living room area. So a, a while back, I had questions about doing um, shampooers on rugs if you have a hard wood underneath because people were concerned that if I shampoo the rug, then it would get all wet and then it would seep underneath and then ruin the wood underneath. And um, with this shampooer, you can control the amount of liquid, the amount of fluid or cleaner or water that comes out of it. So um, I tried to kind of control it and not do it super, super thick. I also have a rug pad underneath. So I typically will check and see 
um, how much water got underneath and just make sure that none got on the wood floor. So you can still use these on rugs and in my opinion I do like using them on rugs. I'm actually going to try a new shampooer next week which I'm excited about. And our other method for cleaning rugs is to take it outside and power wash it. That's the way my husband prefers. Um, and it actually does do an awesome job. You give me this energy. energy. It is like you set me free. Yeah. Chasing heights to stay alive. But if I'm with you, I'll survive. So since I'm doing some shampooing, the next thing that I wanted to shampoo were these bar stools. So that is, I think that's ketchup on that bar stool. So we don't have a kitchen table area. We just have our dining room and then we have these two bar stools and then we have a smaller table for the, for the girls to eat at. Um, but sometimes they'll hop on these bar stools and eat as well. So food will get stuck on this and stained on them. Um, so I'm going to shampoo these bar stools, even though I did order new bar stools that are on back order, um, I'm just going to try and clean these up as best I can. And then I will figure out um, what I'm going to do with them later. So for here, I'm using the Bissell Little Green Machine. Now the other shampooer that I just used, the Pet Pro Carpet Shampooer does have a handheld attachment. So you probably don't need both if you have the handheld attacher on that one but I somehow broke that handheld attachment. I have no idea how on that one. So I did order this little green machine so that I could do some easier spot cleaning. Next week, I'm gonna be trying out a new carpet shampooer, which I am really excited about. So in pretty much every single video, and you know this if you've been here before, I like to do a lot of learning, a lot of self-development. I read a lot, listen to podcasts, and try and share some helpful tips with all of you guys from something that I've learned. And I've gotten some recent questions about which podcasts I've been listening to recently. And also real quickly, why it's so important. So first off, the two people that I like to listen to on YouTube, which they have podcasts as well, are Tony Robbins, which is like the head mastermind of self-development and all things life-related, and then also um, Tom Bilyeu. Podcast-wise, I've been enjoying Rachel Hollis, Lori Harder, and Jim Quick. Now, if you've ever heard the saying, if you're the smartest one in the room, then you're in the wrong room, that means that you need to surround yourself with people who are uplifting, going to motivate you, going to inspire you, and also have dreams and goals that they have maybe reached that you hope to reach one day. I started reading books and listening to podcasts to really help me get out of my comfort zone and stop settling for things that I knew that I had such a bigger purpose in life and it took a long time for me to realize that. So I know that every single one of you guys listening today has a purpose and is meant to be here. You are so much more important than the way that your house looks or the way that you clean your house or the tools that you use to do it. Sometimes we just need some convincing within ourselves that we are good enough. But later in this video, I do wanna share some tips about having a breakthrough moment, which I learned from Tony Robbins in a recent podcast. But this dirty water is from the two bar stools that I just shampooed up. 
So I finally got the rugs in and I'm changing out this runner rug. We gave it to a friend and while everything else in the living room is drying, I'm gonna go ahead and switch out the rug in the runner. So this was the rug that all of y'all had voted for on my Instagram for our living room rug, but I ended up ordering it as a runner rug and I absolutely love it. It's longer, it's wider, and I feel like it fits the space so much better. So thanks for your help in voting for that. The next thing I'm gonna do is try and take apart the couch and I couldn't do it by myself so I had to wait for Chris to come home one day and help me um, move the couch out of the way. That way I could do more deep cleaning in this area and then roll up that rug. So let's see what all we find when I move this around. Reboot, I'm COVID, my service automated Like data running through my veins Got you distracted, subconscious overloaded Careful, don't pull the cord on me No time, no time to stay around Keep walking till you get out of my face Regress, restricted access I'm just to fly to get up here yeah. We move this charge going to use the Folex carpet cleaner to get a couple more spots that I saw off of the rug. This is really my go-to stain remover for carpets and rugs. Now that I have everything moved out of the way, I'm going to give these window sills a clean. Usually there's us there's just bugs in dog care, nothing too, too terrible. Luckily, I thought it was going to be a lot dirtier than it was. I think because we had just moved the couch after Christmas, whenever we took down the Christmas tree. So it wasn't too, too long ago that I cleaned up this area. Um, so that's why it's not that bad. I pulled up the old rug and went, went ahead and rolled that up to give it to my sister and also the rug pad. So underneath the rug pad, I had we had sand because Chris had put sand out in the yard to level it and it just, it I guess it just kind of accumulated underneath that rug pad. To clean the window sills, I'm just going, I'm just using the e-cloths and I'm also kind of going down the baseboards a little bit, but the e-cloths are supposed to have some type of magic in them where all you have to do is wet them and they they kill 99% of the germs. So I've been enjoying the e-cloths actually a lot more recently. I've had them for, I don't know, eight months or so maybe. And I typically use the e-cloths in the kitchen area a lot more often than the regular cloths. But I noticed that I have been grabbing them a lot more often. So it is now like bug season. I feel like when the warmer weather comes, we get so many bugs, including mosquitoes. That was like a really big mosquito hawk. And I don't know, spiders, cockroaches, all of those things that somehow sneak around. It was so funny because um, 
A couple weeks ago, we went to a birthday party and I saw a spider in the car and it like jumped at me. I was in the passenger seat and we had 45 minute drive to where we were going. And this was like five minutes in the drive. And I got my shoe and I tried to like get it and kill it. And it went in between the grooves in my shoe and it fell like in between the seat and in between the console and Chris was driving and I was like I can't move like I was like on the side I was like I need it gone I can't like drive just knowing that it's sitting there still alive and everything like that and so anyway I sat there and watched it in the most comfortable uncomfortable position for 45 minutes because I was like deathly afraid of it and I'm not even that scared of spiders I just don't want to be confined next to it um, and like it jump at me and not have anywhere to go so let me know what your biggest insect fear is mine is actually probably cockroaches if it was a cockroach I would have jumped out of the car but um, leave me a comment below let me know what your biggest insect fear is so I'm finally pulling out the new rug I laid down the rug pad and I ordered both of the rugs from a website called Miss Amira and I actually saw this rug a long time ago but at the time they were only shipping from Australia and I was like I'm not gonna pay the cost to ship it from Australia to the US this big giant thing but I saw they they created a Miss Amira US so I ended up ordering it from there and I got it like within a week so this is a 9 by 12 size rug and um, first I'm trying to unroll it and I was like they rolled it backwards like it wasn't easy for me to just unroll if you see what I mean so I was trying to like figure out how I could get it to where I wouldn't have to turn it over unroll it and flip it back over but I ended up having to do that anyway now I will say I really really like this rug it is nice and thick but it also the material on it it almost feels like a performance material so that it can be in high traffic areas it's not like super super soft but it feels like it will just hold up all of the traction or like I said high traffic area in this space <laughs> I miss you, miss you Take you off, I came in way too strong Cannot keep it low-key Got me drugged, your pheromones hit the roof Auto, your taste It's really a bad reception out there Where are you heading? So one dilemma I came across is that the rug pad is actually bigger than the rug itself. So if it wasn't on perfectly, you can see like the rug pad coming through underneath so I I don't recommend this rug pad I got my old rug and this rug pad from overstock.com but I don't I don't like it but it helps keep the rug in place so until I get a new one I can you know replace it then so I'm trying to just like smooth everything out to make sure it's all even and then what I end up having to do is go back through and cut cut this rug pad so like I said, it, it, it's not my favorite, but um, at least this way, the rug can sit nicely on top of it and you don't see that rug pad underneath. So once I get the rug, rug down and then get the rug pad cut and all squared away and got everything smooth and even out, then my next step is to wait for Chris to come home so that we can move the couches back in place. In the meantime, I did get all of the cushions dried, so I'm going to start putting all the cushions back, cushion covers back on the couch, on the cushions. You know what I mean. So clearly I'm struggling here, but it's all good. So I promised you guys to give you some of the tips that I heard from a recent podcast from, it was actually Jim Quick's podcast where he interviewed Tony Robbins. So a lot of the other um, influential people that I find are from people who I like who have like interviewed somebody else and then I may go check out their podcast if I really enjoyed the interview. 
But in this podcast, um, Tony Robbins was talking about how to how people have breakthrough moments or what motivates them or what gets them to achieve that breakthrough moment. And so like when you want to start something new or make a transformation or change something, he said that most people start with the strategy and sometimes strategy can be effective, but in majority of cases, it's not the strategy that's going to get you there. Or at least that's not where you should start. So he used the example of weight loss. Like for example, people are like, people want to start with the strategy, want to go with this tactic, want to do that tactic. But he said that you should never start with the strategy. You first need to change your state, meaning your mindset, and the story you are telling yourself about this thing. So let's say, for example, you want to start a weight loss transformation and you buy this program and you start your program with day one and then you get really discouraged and you just give up all motivation. Well, the problem is, is that you didn't change your story first. What is the story you're telling yourself? I've tried everything. Nothing works. I've tried all the diets out there. I've done all this. Well, he says, if you tried everything, then you should, it should work, right? If you've done everything out there in the book, then it should work. So what you need to do is reshape your mindset and reshape the story that you're telling yourself about this. So for example, instead of saying, I've tried everything, nothing works, it's not for me, it just doesn't work on my body, change your story and say, I can do this, I want to do this, I am motivated to do this, I will do whatever it takes. And once you reshaped your state of mind, then you will find the motivation and drive to then follow the strategy that then comes next. Because a lot of these things and strategies and tactics to whatever it is you're trying to transform is not rocket science. There's really not tons of secrets or anything like that. The secret is changing your state of mind and believing in yourself that you can do it. And it's not something you just say one day and then feel motivated all the time right? It's like a daily habit. It's a daily practice that you have to build confidence every single day. And once you continually do that, then you actually start believing in yourself. And when you believe in yourself, then there are no limits in what you can do and what you can accomplish. So I encourage you, even before you get started with your daily to-do lists or tasks or however you get your stuff accomplished, is to say something positive about yourself. Because I will always preach that being a good, genuine, kind person and being confident in who you are beats having a clean house any day of the week. Hey, I've been dreaming now about you. Every night I see your clearest day. It's just something about the way you make me feel cause I can't concentrate anytime you're beside me yeah it's what you do to me I can barely breathe hey I've been thinking about you and all the words that I'm gonna say the next time that I see a pretty face Cause I can concentrate anytime you're beside me. Yeah, it's what you do to me. I can barely breathe. So I'm really happy with the way that everything turned out, and I'm really glad that we went with this rug for this area. The next thing that we are going to attempt to put together is this light. And some of the challenges that we have are that one we have 20 foot ceiling so it's actually that light has been sitting there for i want to say a week or two and chris is going to attempt to put this together i was hoping that he could just do it all by himself but i ended up having to help a lot it is such a beautiful light i want to tell you that i was looking for new lights for probably a month or two trying to find the perfect one and i made the investment i got this one from pottery barn and it's crystals that you have to hang each individual crystal on the outside of the, I guess it's like an ovally shaped light. So 
I was, I was like hoping that it would just turn out phenomenal and look gorgeous in the space. And I'm so glad that I went with this one because I think at the end of the day, it does. Some of the other lights that I've purchased in the past, like the one that we already have in our living room area is from Wayfair. I think I have gotten one from overstock.com. Um, but overall, and you can find some affordable dupes, but I just wanted pure elegance. I couldn't find anything that I liked or that I envisioned for the space. So like every time I would look, I would raise my budget a little bit more and then I just decided to go for it. So the very first thing that we have to do is get in this ladder. So this is a super, super tall ladder. It's really heavy and we had to get it out, out from the side of the fence. And one of my jobs is to help throughout this whole process. And I'm like, okay, Chris, I'm 25 weeks pregnant. So just bear with me if I'm a little bit slower, I'm going to do the best that I can. But, um, overall it was a challenge, but we were able to get this ladder moved. There's something about your face. Can't stop looking your way. Okay, so how often do you guys clean your chandeliers and light fixtures? I don't know why, I've just never thought about it. So we have like June bugs in here. It is so dirty. And once I get this thing all cleaned up and shiny, it pretty much looks like a brand new light. It's really unbelievable. So this light is a restoration hardware dupe. I think it's from Overstock. I can't fully remember where I got it, but it actually started off in our dining room, then moved to our living room and it was there for a couple of years and now we're moving it to the front entryway. So it's not very heavy because these are not real crystals, they're plastic. So it, it feels a lot lighter, whereas the new light fixture is so heavy. So we tend to like put it up and then put the light fixtures, I mean the crystals on last. And this light fixture came in like a hundred million pieces, y'all. Like every little single dangly thing had to be attached and connected together. It took like several hours to put this thing together. But you can definitely see how dirty it is and how often I don't clean it. So one of the big things that I've heard before and actually from Lisa Holt Design, she's a YouTube... In, she's a youtuber here but she's like a professional interior designer is she says like to to change up the envelope of the room so like the top the wall and the bottom first before you like fill out the middle with furniture so i am drawn to light fixtures the number one thing i love changing out in our house is light fixtures and rugs if you can't already tell i feel like it makes the biggest statement and the biggest change in the space that you have <laughs>
So what's going on here is that we got the base part assembled, but the poles are not long enough. So Chris, we had some extra change, so we, chains. So we had to add chains to the poles to make it long enough. And there's our poor sweet balloon that's been up there for two months that we haven't been able to get down until now. So we spray painted the chains black. So we're gonna add those chains to the poles so that it sits down low enough. So while that is drying, then our next task is to move the ladder over to the front entryway so that we can take down the current light that's there and then add that um, globe light in the front entryway. So this front light is a light that actually came with the house when we bought it. We had like bought the bronze lighting package or something like that. We had changed out most of the light fixtures besides that one. And I will say that it takes us so much long longer to switch out these light fixtures. And I didn't plan on getting on ladders and stuff like that, but I ended up having to help a lot more than anticipated. So this space is actually the space above the front door. So when he was up there, he was like, it is so dirty up here and he offered to clean it, but I said that I would get on one of the smaller ladders and clean up all of the dust on this windowsill or whatever the ledge is on, on top of the front door. So here I am trying to hold my balance on the ladder, hold the camera and then hold the vacuum and try and get everything cleaned up as best I can without falling. And just so you know, I am being super careful. So here I'm on top of the front door. So that's like the ledge on top of the front door where there is also a ton of dust and everything. So here I'm trying, I'm using another e-cloth and I'm trying to get all the dirt as best I can. And it's not, it doesn't end up being completely perfect because I'm like, you know, it is what it is. Um, I just am trying not to fall. So um, I do get it as best as I possibly can which is a lot better than where it was at before. And again, this is another never cleaned before area. So once Chris has got the new light fixture hung up, it looks brand new now that it's nice and clean and shiny. We just need to change that one back there in the corner. I'll have to find something that matches a little bit better and then we will attempt to change that out. So now we're moving back to the living room light. We've got all of the chains dried from painting them black so that they'll match. And now we gotta move this ladder one more time. Like I said, it is so heavy, but we are determined to finish this up today. You're a rebel, getting into trouble. You are kind of like a fire, like a fire, like a fire. Unpredictable, so original. You are never backing down, backing down, backing down. That's what I like about you. So dangerous. I get this rush when I'm with you. I go so the base part isn't too heavy, and our strategy here is to get everything hooked up and get the right level we want. So we had to like adjust it a little bit to make sure that that is the height that we wanted it. And then I started to hang the crystals each individually. So it's kind of funny, but I had a question for my Instagram while I was doing this. I was kind of showing you guys through the process over there. And um, somebody said, how do you get your husband to help you do all of this stuff? Most of the time, like maybe their husband um, works all day or like does manual labor all day. So when he comes home, he doesn't want to do more manual labor and I totally get it. I wouldn't want to either. So Chris is just like, go, go, go 24 seven. Typically I'm like, I'm gonna hire someone to do this. And he's like, no, I can do it myself. So that's kind of how I get him motivated to um, get up and help me around the house. Plus he enjoys all of this kind of stuff. So um, I got really lucky with that. 
So we finally got the light up and it turned out beautiful. I'm absolutely in love with the look of this space. I hope that you guys enjoyed this long video. And if you are not subscribed, I would love it for you to click that subscribe button. And be sure to stick around for the next minute or so of the video because I do have some of those real life blooper moments to share with y'all. Get this party started. I got the music playing loud. How you like my outfit? I have to say I'm kind of proud. I got my dancing shoes on. And I'm feeling dangerous Let's get this party started Yeah, we gon' be adventurous We went to the club like we always do This girl caught my eye, said, how do you do? She said, I am not interested, thank you Then she left the room Bartender I'll have the usual Give me the usual I'll take the usual There are three main goals for this video. Goal number one is to get this entire patio cleaned up, pressure washed, deep cleaned, and also replace our new rug, which Ruggable did sponsor this video, and I'm excited to share that with you. Goal number two is to build an outdoor sandbox in the corner of our backyard. That way the kids can play. And goal number three is to not pass out in this 95 degree Texas heat and almost 90% humidity day. So I am now 29 weeks pregnant and trust me, it is very difficult. I have to constantly remind myself that I cannot do the same things that I was able to do before pregnancy, but I am going to try and do as much as I can. So welcome to my backyard and my home. If this is your first time here, I have two daughters, which you might see running around this video a little bit in the background. Sailor's four, Savannah is two. And then I'm, like I just mentioned, I'm pregnant with a baby boy. Chris is my husband and he is going to be helping out a ton. So you'll definitely see him here. He is also recently quit his corporate job to pursue um, his landscaping business. So a lot of the stuff that we use are like commercial grade products because that is part of his business. But I've asked him to also give um, some tips and tricks and anything like that if you're looking to do any type of landscaping or do some intense outdoor cleaning. Here on my channel, I share all types of good vibes, whether it's cleaning motivation, whether it is funny stories, mindset motivation to get you up and get you going, real life organization, as well as my favorites, which are also the hardest, which are home projects. So if you make it through this video and you want some more, then make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss any of my weekly content that comes out. I make it as real life, fun, and motivating as possible. But just by judging from the intro, I hope that you can tell that this is going to be a really good video. So we've actually already gotten started. We cleaned everything off the patio and then we are gonna start deep cleaning this area now.
things that we're gonna do is actually clean up this old rug and then we are going to roll it up and then give it to a friend. So we're gonna clean it first. So what we have done is we use a pressure washer. So Chris has a commercial grade pressure washer, but what this thing is, is called a surface washer and it's actually attached to the pressure washer to give it some really powerful deep cleaning. This is what we will clean really dirty rugs with along with our outdoor patio. And it's also really good if you do a lot of deep cleaning of concrete or driveways, sidewalks, anything like that. So I asked Chris for the best recommendation for like a standard pressure washer that is not commercial grade or anything like that if you just want to do your own house. And he recommends anything that has at least 3200 PSI, which is the pressure that comes out. Also, he prefers ones that have a Honda motor, which he thinks are the best. And his number one store he recommends to buy them from is Northern Tool, which they do have them across the US. Again, he told me that the most important thing you wanna look for is the pressure or the PSI. And again, he recommends 3,200 or more. This surface washer attachment just pretty much cuts the time in half if you are doing a large outdoor area. So we are already in June. So y'all let me know, have you already done a lot of your outdoor deep cleaning or did you wait so long for it to be super hot or at least for us it is before you actually started? But what's different from last year is that last year we had in the summertime like a ton of mice or rats and it, it wasn't super infested. It wasn't like we would come outside and like mice would scatter around. We would never see them, but there would be mice. I tell myself it's mice. I don't know if it's rats, but I don't want to think that it's a rat. But anyway, we would see like mice poop everywhere. So whenever we would do deep cleaning or clean around these areas, it would be everywhere. This year, we have not seen any and I am so thankful. I have no idea why. Maybe it's still early in the summertime, but um, I'm so glad we don't have any anything like that. But if y'all were here last year, then maybe you do remember that. So Chris switched it over to the actual pressure washer hose. So again, it's still the same pressure washer. It's just that we changed up the attachment. So now this is where we can get into those really small surfaces and get those really good deep cleaned. Tell me what you have to go and drive me so crazy. Now I'm feeling lost without you, and I just can't be without you, baby. Want you all night long, want you all night long. Tell me what you have to go and drive me so crazy. Now I'm feeling lost without you, and I just can't be without you, baby. Want you all So the next thing we're going to do after we have all of the outdoor surfaces kind of cleaned up is go ahead and pressure wash these couch cushions. Now I can unzip these couch cushions and put them in the washing machine. I got this set at World Market, but um, I've done it before once or twice and it is like almost impossible for me to get the cushions back on. They're so tight that um, if you guys unzip them, you guys know what I mean. But I like almost ripped the cushion trying to get the cushion covers back on. And I just told him, can we just power wash these? Because it's so much easier to do that than for me to spend an hour trying to unzip everything. And then the hardest part is getting them back on. 
we actually haven't cleaned these i want to say since maybe last fall so um and the summertime is when we like do so much more outdoor cleaning or it's kind of normal so some of these cushions yes they do have mildew and stuff all over them but again this thing gets it out really good i wish that i was better about like putting the cushions away during like when it rains and stuff um i'm just not i need to get i need to get better about putting them up and stuff but these are they're supposed to be like really sturdy outdoor cushions waterproof or whatever so i should still probably put more effort into putting them away when it rains but anyway considering it's summer do y'all have any fun travel plans this summer I feel like I'm gonna live vicariously through y'all because this third pregnancy is kind of taking a toll on me. So leave me a comment below. Let me know where you're from, what you are doing this summer, like where do you plan to travel to? And if you have any great recommendations for spots with like family friendly spots, spots with young kids, places that you've been and traveled to that are like, a must do then also leave those recommendations in the comments below too for us this summer we plan to just hang out in the backyard a lot because like I said it's difficult for me to go places but we also have like a water park close by so we typically will do that on you know some weekends during the summer and then we live about two hours from Galveston Beach so we also tend to go to the beach you know a couple times a summer as well What's your story? What's your sign? It's like we're twin flames in a different life. Deep connection, lights a spark. It's like you know me in the depths of my heart. We're dreamers. I mentioned the second half of this video is us building a big sandbox to go in the corner of our house and that is in order to keep like all of the kids toys in one section so we kind of like started it and went back and forth so the sandbox took um a couple of days like full days weekends to actually complete so in order just to keep everything together, I'm showing all the cleaning part first and then we actually finish up the sandbox while everything is drying out here in the yard and then we put everything back together. So it's kind of scattered the way that we did it, but the way that I just wanted to put this video was together, I wanted it to flow a lot evenly. So one thing is that we have this Bermuda grass and Chris has perfected it to make it look like golf course grass. So he does not like the toys all over the yard because it kills the grass, but then a lot of the toys take up our concrete patio area. So it was his idea to kind of create this sandbox. Now, will we regret it later? Maybe because of all of the sand, but I can't wait to show you the process and how it all turns out. So we waited a couple of hours and our patio is finally dry. So I'm excited to pull out our brand new ruggable rug. This is actually not the first ruggable rug that we own. The thing that caught my attention most about the brand is that these are machine washable rugs. So if you have a high traffic area, like for us, the outdoor space, because we have our dog, our kids, us, and we just enjoy being outside, especially in the evenings. And we have a lot of get togethers over at our house. So we spend a majority of the time outside on this patio and to get something that is machine washable, stain resistant, and easy to clean up, especially in this high traffic area, is a win. 
The first thing we're laying down is the rug pad and we are getting it evened out because we ended up going with a nine by 12 rug. Our previous rug was an eight by 10. And what, it, what happens is you can change out the rugs and you just Velcro it onto the rug pad. So the rug pad helps give it some extra cushion and the actual rug is what you can take off and just throw in the washing machine. It is a non-slip rug, so it actually just Velcros onto the rug pad itself. This is Ruggable's offset stripe rug design in the color black. I got the size 9 by 12, which fits perfectly within this outdoor space. I personally think it changes up the whole look of this patio and really makes a statement out here. So be sure to click the link in my description box for 10% off your Ruggable rug using my code MICHELLE10. So as we are cleaning up everything, this was actually done a different weekend, the weekend that we actually started the sandbox, but we blew up this water slide bounce house, which we use just about every single weekend. And we've had it for about two years, but sometimes if you don't completely dry it off before you fold it up, then this mildew gets all on the side of it. So. It had been one or two times, uh, we've obviously learned our lesson, but it's been one or two times since we folded it up. Maybe it was a little bit wet and that's kind of what happened. So I'm attempting to use just regular soap, like dish soap and like a car wash scrubber to scrub the sides of this bounce house or water slide bounce house, whatever you want to call it, while the girls are actually playing in it to see if I can get off all of the mildew. Unfortunately, it does not make a huge difference. So we are open to any type of tips or suggestions to get the mold or mildew, whatever is on this bounce house to get it off. Chris said that we might have to buy like a special chemical or something, but I don't think he's looked into it much, but I figured that I would just ask all of y'all to see if you guys have any good recommendations to help me clean this off. So today we are in the works of starting a new project. We are adding a sandbox to the back corner of our backyard. Um, what we decided was that since we have like a ton of kid toys everywhere, like the trampoline, we have like this and we have like slides and like everywhere and they just get scattered across the yard. Chris doesn't like them all in the yard, especially when he's having to mow and um, move everything around so what his, it was his idea to kind of um, kind of redo this black back flower bed and what we're going to end up doing is taking out this back flower bed building up a sandbox that has like boulders and everything like that maybe extending out this area here so that it comes all the way out to the sandbox and that way we can keep the kid area in that section of the yard with the trampoline, the kid toys, the sandbox. We'll move the house over there as well. Um, that way the whole back patio area can be cleared out. And then um, there's no room, like he doesn't have to like move all the stuff when he mows. And it's just easy for the grass. Later on we have a couple more things we'll do back here like add in like he wants to build like a cactus garden or whatever. Um, we have grapes growing back in that 
area there. Um, so eventually we have projects coming, but um, this is the one that we are going to be starting out today. Hey now, honey, I've been driving around in my car, looking for some kind of open bar. It's gonna be all right, gonna be all right. Got no money, but I'll work it out with my charm. Having a good time and doing no harm. It's gonna be all right, gonna be all right. Honey, I've been driving around in my car Looking for some kind of open bar It's gonna be alright, gonna be alright Got no money, but I'll work it out with my charm Having a good time and doing no harm It's gonna be alright, gonna be alright First thing that we did for this project was map out exactly how big we want to build out this area and then we are rerouting the landscaping to go around the tree so the idea of having it right here is that the tree would help block off some of the sun and then um, it would just be a nice cooler area for the little play area so after we kind of mapped out the area that we wanted, we put the rocks there to see if we needed any extra rocks to build out the landscaping or to extend out the flower bed. And then now what we have to do is actually cut all of this grass out. So we cut it into little squares and we actually replant it in lower spots. So we reuse the grass that's already here. So this actually looks easy, but let me tell you, oh my gosh, this is a job in itself. What are some tips about laying rock if someone were to want to landscape their own yard with add rocks? Make sure you remove the grass, cut the grass out where you can keep the grass from growing in and then just get the bottom legs pretty level and then you just stack on top of it. Step back, step back 10-15 feet, look at it and move rocks around if you need to. So clearly we don't vlog much on our videos, which I'm trying to kind of change it up and see how things go because I don't remember everything exactly while we're in the middle of the project. But what he was trying to say and what I was trying to ask was, how, what are some good tips as far as laying rocks? Cause he was specific on the way that I was doing things. And um, what he was saying was just make sure that you cut out the grass before you actually lay the stone. That way you don't have weeds and you don't have grass growing in between the stone. And also make sure that it's all level. So you can use um, dirt to help get all of the pieces level. And then um, he was suggesting to put the smaller rocks on the bottom and the bigger rocks on top to help hold down those smaller pieces. But it really just depends on the look that you're going for. Also another tip whenever cutting out the grass, make sure that you have a really sharp shovel and cut it into smaller squares. This way, if you want to replant the grass elsewhere, then you have that capability to do so. And it's also a lot easier to pull up when it's cut in smaller squares. We were cutting it into pieces about the size of the shovel. Maybe half past two A little drunk when I'm alright 
since I've been hanging with you And it feels like love Tell me if I'm wrong Cause it feels like love Yeah, it feels like love Come on, come on, come on, come on Come on, come on So what was the machine you just used? Yeah, what does the cultivator do? Mixes the soil. Uh, anytime you pull out old flowers, want to plant new, it's always good to mix the soil to get you know the dirt moved around. It makes it dirt rich. Or if you add any organic soil to it, you can dump the soil in and mix it all up and then plant flowers. I think about you and I. I want you here with me. Am I out of my mind? Or is this how it should be? You made me sing about love So just tell me if I'm wrong But it feels like love Yeah, it feels like love Yeah! So what he was saying earlier with, was that this is called a cultivator and it basically just helps make the soil rich and mixes it up really well. So clearly I was like, oh, this is gonna be so easy and I was struggling so bad. I do have some really good bloopers at the end for you if you guys stick around to the very end. But one thing that we did have to do was take down this rose bush, it was knockout roses. so. Um, we we kind of get these all the time. So he, what he just did was cut it all up and then we bagged it up and pulled it out. So I know this is so random. Every time I see Chris in that fishing hat, I'm like, what are you wearing? But it helps protect the sun. So I just have to laugh and get over it. A little crazy for you now. A little crazy for you now. A little crazy for you now, baby. I So this is day one of this project before we get the sand and I'm probably inside somewhere <laughs> passed out on the floor but um, we made it. The next step is we are at the landscape yard and we are getting three oh man what is it called quarts of sand pallets yards three yards of sand and we also got three thousand pounds of boulders so we're putting boulder on the outside of it and then filling it all up with three yards of sand. All right, day two, let's finish. We in fact did not finish that day, <laughs> but we did finish the next day. So we do get a lot done this day. So what Chris is putting down now is weed protector. I kind of forgot what it's called, but basically you lay it down so that none of the weeds will come through the sand. So even though we had started this project the previous weekend, we already saw a little bit of grass and weeds coming through. So this just kind of helps protect it and build a barrier there so that um, they don't come through. The next step is to get all of the sand from the trailer off into the backyard. Then we will start building the outside or the perimeter of the sandbox with these ginormous boulders. Okay, so what are you, you laying down? So weed fabric prevents the weeds from coming through. You can see some of the grass is coming through. We put this barrier down, the sand on top of the die. And then when you lay this, you want to overlap. You want to overlap it a couple inches. So if you put it like this, you have a crack, it's 
So I typically do tons of cleaning motivation on my channel and you're probably wondering why I'm like doing all these random projects, especially being like this pregnant and me talking about how I don't want to say I'm miserable, but it's just difficult. This pregnancy has been more difficult than my other two. But um, one of the reasons and that someone had mentioned this to me about just feeling so burnt out, like how do you keep going? when you are completely burnt out of what you're doing. You like what you do, but it's just no longer fulfilling the way that it was before. And I was listening to this podcast by Angie Lee, and she had suggested a couple tips, like, you know, making sure that you're taking a break, checking out, um, you know, but the one, one suggestion she had was, you know, think about why you started in the first place and ask yourself this one question, what would make this fun again? So I just thought that was so interesting because I'd never heard that before. So I do so much cleaning and I just felt like I'm just cleaning all of the time. And you know, sometimes when you pick a niche on YouTube, it's not always smart to change it up all the time because you may not have as many people coming back to the same thing. So I tried to think, really really hard about you know what would make this fun again for me and i started writing down all these projects all this content i wanted to create around these projects how it could be different and useful and the one thing i thought of was you know keeping everything within the same niche but just experimenting and if it turns out a disaster it's a disaster and if it's not then it could turn into some awesome fun content so if you are feeling burnt out over something then try something different and ask yourself the question what would make this fun again but now we are on the third almost full day of being out here in the backyard and chris has got all of the boulders out laid perfectly like i said three thousand pounds worth of boulders he moved pretty much by himself and we've leveled out all the sand. One thing we will add is come, come back and landscape that area, but now we can finally get all of the toys in this corner. You know that I'm the queen. So the outdoor area is cleaned off. We have our new beautiful rug to set the stage for the whole patio. And then we have our sandbox that we built for the girls who absolutely love it. But thank you guys so much for coming along on this journey with me. I hope that you'll subscribe if you enjoyed this video today and I'll see you guys next week. Make sure you stick around for the last minute or so for those real life bloopers. Put her on the camera. You can show. Oh, wow. Look at box. the camera real quick and talk like you're explaining it. No, you do it. I'm gonna show you. Do it. Do it. You do it. Well, you do it first. All right. Let me know. Do you grow? What do you girls think? You like it? Yeah. Yeah? You love it? Yeah. <laughs> I think it is. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you right now. Your exquisite kiss still burning. Didn't know I missed this passion in life. Now I'm addicted so much. Let me tell you why. What is up with your smile? It's impossible.
say that it's not about all of the things that are in the space, but the way that the space makes you feel and the memories that are created within the space. So in creating a shared space for my two toddler girls, the things that I looked for were making this space fun, cute, comfortable, and safe. So in this video, I'll share all the details on how I accomplished just that. Now, if this is your first time here, you're probably wondering why there's a big air mattress in here and what I plan to do in this room. So let me introduce myself. My name is Michelle and in this video, I am currently pregnant, but as I'm doing this voiceover and if you've been following me for a while, you'll know that I had the baby just a few weeks ago. So because I just had a baby, the goal for this room is to now have my two girls, Savannah just turned three and Sailor is four. They are going to be sharing this room. Savannah's older bedroom became the nursery. So if you hadn't seen that video, make sure you check it out. And we are transforming this room into their shared room. And I was doing this so late in my pregnancy because I had ordered bunk beds several months ago. They ended up being on back ordered and then were back ordered an additional month. So in order to get them sharing a room so that I could start the nursery, I went ahead and threw this queen size air mattress in their room so that they could start getting used to sleeping together and sleeping in the same room. And now that we got confirmation that the bunk beds are finally getting delivered, then we are starting to take apart this bedroom and make it over. But my name is Michelle. I enjoy making over spaces, doing lots of seasonal decor, and lots and lots of cleaning motivation. We have an awesome community here and I would love more than anything for you to subscribe and join this amazing community. But let's go ahead and get started by clearing out this entire room. A couple hours from Japan, would you stay awake? I'm losing touch of who I am when you're far away. And I feel like I'm running in circles around you. we are temporarily moving everything in the playroom until we decide what we're going to do with the old bed as well as like the rug and some other stuff so in order to make it feel like Savannah, my, well now middle child, isn't just getting kicked out of her bedroom and the baby's taking over and then she's moving into her older sister's room. Um, what we did was we took some of the stuff from Savannah's room and also put it into this room so that she still has some items so that it makes it feel more like a shared space opposed to her just sleeping in her sister's room. I know that she's only three years old, but that was just one of my bigger like mom guilt fears was that she was going to feel like kicked out of her space and, and with a new baby coming, that's just a huge change in itself. I wanted her to feel like she was getting something out of it too. So here we are in Savannah's room, taking down the curtains in her room and we'll move them over to the new room. We also managed to swap out the light fixtures and moved that over as well a little earlier in this video. These white panels were already in Sailor's room. So what we're doing is just adding the pink panels on the outside. And I think that it ended up turning out super cute and really full. So goal number one was to make it feel like a shared space where they both had familiar decor pieces. Our second goal was to keep it as simple as possible. So one thing we decided not to do was repaint the walls or change up any of the walls. Now, when we made this initially Sailor's Nursery, uh, we did add the chair 
molding along the wall so Chris my husband did that himself and then we picked out just a very very light subtle pink and a gray for the top and I honestly still love the way that the walls are and turned out so in order to keep it simple and not over complicate this space we decided to leave all of the walls as is once we got the bed and everything else out of the room, besides the dresser, because the dresser's staying, then I'm just going to vacuum the floors, give it a pretty good deep clean, and then next I'm going to come through with my Tinco carpet shampooer and give it a good shampoo. I'm cleaning up the rug in Savannah's room because this rug will also be moving over to the new room as well. There's another side of you trying to break through, able to tell the truth. No one else can see you like I do. All you ever do is say how far you want to. I can tell it's just for sure Every line designed to let me know Now this carpet shampooer has a wet feature where it actually wets the carpet to shampoo it and a drying feature. So if you see me going over it like several times, it's probably because it's in dry mode. So I go through it really, well not super fast, but I go through it in the shampoo mode to get it all cleaned up. And then I will go back over it in dry mode to basically dry it. So it's not sitting there wet for several hours. So our third goal for the space is to get Sailor to actually sleep in here as well. I know this is her bedroom, but one of the things that she does, one issue that we have is that she loves to sleep in our bed. So it kind of started off on vacation um, one time where she, you know, slept in the hotel bed with us and then getting her to get back in her bed has been a struggle. So I know that I'm a part of this like parenting Facebook group and someone asked kind of the same question, like how do you get your toddler back sleeping in their room? And I'm like, ooh, I have that issue. I need to go and look at all the responses. Oh, funny thing. I just knocked the camera completely off of that shelf. I thought I broke it. Thankfully, I didn't. But um, I go and I look at all the responses and um, to see like, oh, are they going to say like I'm a bad parent because they sleep in our bed and all of this stuff. So I'm looking and so many people are, are responding in this Facebook post. Um, just let them sleep with you. They're only little for a little time. And um, it kind of made me feel better. And I'm not the type of person, I know maybe I'm like not the best mom, but I'm not the type of person to wake up in the middle of the night and put her back upstairs in her bedroom, like get into not an argument, but like, you know, every time we try and carry her back upstairs, she wakes up and she starts kicking and I'm just like not at two in the morning. I'm not ready for that. So, you know, we just cave in and let her stay in bed with us, but now that Savannah has had gotten older, she started coming down too. And I was like, this is not working. I'm super pregnant. I have my huge pregnancy pillow. I cannot have both girls in the bed with Chris, with everyone. And it's like, I had no room. I would go and sleep on the couch sometimes. So one of my biggest, biggest goals is to try and get her sleeping back in her bed. She's always been our like difficult sleeper even as a little baby just everything she just can stay up and does not like sleeping so we are just hoping that getting her excited about her new room not having her sleep alone sleeping with her sister and like transforming this room getting her excited about it that she will finally be excited and actually stay sleeping in her room that is goal number three. And now that we have everything cleaned out of this room, the delivery truck is finally coming. After four long months, they are coming to set up the bed. And we are so excited the way that it turned out. I absolutely love this bunk bed. 
So this bed is from Pottery Barn and the girls bed finally got delivered. So we're having them look at it for the first time after the anticipation for several months. They are finally getting to look and see what the bed looks like. Now our Helix Kids mattress is also getting delivered along with the bedspread, but our goal for this space was to safe and easy for them to get in and out of. So like I said, since Savannah is three, she's my wild child, and Sailor is four, um, finding a safe bunk bed was a little bit of a challenge. Now, not so much for Sailor, but for Savannah being my, you know, like I said, my wild one, I did not want her climbing up a unsafe bunk bed and falling off, especially like in the middle of the night or something. Now, even though we say, you know, Sailor can have the top bunk, Savannah can have the bottle bunk because she's younger, um, you know, they just both want to be on the top. So finding something super safe, this was one that I felt the most comfortable with getting that safe. It was a bit of an investment and it is from Pottery Barn. But the reason why I kind of liked this one is because the bottom, the bottom bunk, you can, it's not attached to the top bunk. So we can just use that one later and it's a full size bed. So if guests do come, then, you know, they have something where they can sleep instead of on that air mattress. And then the girls can kind of play around and do whatever they want. And I feel really, really comfortable and feel good about the way that the stairs are set up. Now they do have a playroom full of all of their toys. So in the bedroom, I don't like having a ton of toys because they already have a space for them. So what I decided was that they can have all of their stuffed animals. Um, I promise you they grab that basket and dump everything onto their bed and sleep with it at night. But um, they could pretty much have their stuffed animals and stuff in here. And then um, all of their toys are gonna go out in the playroom. So this rug was in Savannah's room and that is a rug that I got when I kind of designed her nursery. That rug is also from Pottery Barn and we were just kind of configuring it into the best way that would work in this room. Yeah, he sets my body in motion. He just, he knows how to turn things up. And he knows what gets me going. Yeah, like a little text saying, hey, what's up? So our special designed kids mattress is here. And I do want to thank Helix Kids for sponsoring today's video. So this is the Helix Kids mattress, which is designed by Helix Sleep and is a premium mattress in a box design specifically with growing kids needs and preferences in mind, which is why I really, really liked it. So this mattress couldn't have came at a better time and the good thing is is that it's shipped conveniently to your door. It's also guaranteed safe, comfortable, and durable. So one of the goals that I had and mentioned before is that I needed something that is safe and also comfortable. So the Helix Kids mattress does have safety in mind because the mattresses are made without harmful chemicals and have undergone extensive lead and the late testing to ensure that your child sleeps safely. This mattress is kid focused, which it has a hypoallergenic cover, which is great for both the moisture wicking and airflow. It's water resistant finish, which is super convenient, um, especially during times when we're potty training. And it's also plant-based durable water resistant finish that is both stain and water repellent because you know, nighttime accidents can definitely happen. And it has a microbe shield, which helps combat odor causing bacteria and maintains hygiene. It's been tested and approved by medical doctors, sleep consultants, child behavior specialists, and real parents of kids ages three through 12. So here, once we've unfolded the mattress and put it on the bed, then it quickly inflates. 
So Helix does offer a 100 night risk free sleep trial. It is made in the US. It is fast and free shipping with a 10 year warranty. So one of my favorite features about this mattress is that it is it has a two sided design. So one of the sides is great for ages three through seven, which is the side that we put it on for our girls who are three and almost five. And then when you flip it over, it's designed for kids ages eight through 12. On the side where it is ages three through seven, there is actually more spinal support and proper development for the kids growing bodies. And as you can see here, as I get a little bit older, we can flip it over to age eight through 12, which is has a more comfortable feel and designed for that age group. So with the purchase of a mattress, using my discount code, you do get two free pillows, which these pillars are so soft and comfortable, but we have had our mattress for a little over a month now, and the girls absolutely love it. When my mom had to stay with the kids while we were in the hospital she made a comment to me she's like their new bed is so comfortable because she was able to sleep on that bottom bunk so i personally love the mattress because it is safe comfortable and designed specifically for them so helix spent sent a special offer just for my audience so make sure you visit helixsleep.com o'malley to get up to a hundred dollars off your helix kids mattress plus two free pillows Next, I'm gonna finish making their bed with this additional mattress protector, which I got off of Amazon, and I have this exact one on my bed as well, and on the top bunk mattress, which was the, the one that was in Sailor's room before on her other bed, and then I also got these bamboo bed sheets set. These are also from Amazon, and they are the Hotel Sheets Direct brand, I think. Um, I had these ones on Sailor's other bed as well, and if you've been following me for a while, you know that I only sleep on bamboo sheets. I absolutely love them. I think they're softer than any um, cotton sheet out there. And the last thing is this comforter. I went ahead and got the Princess Comforter from Pottery Barn, which had the matching um, shams or you know pillowcase set. This is the one that Sailor wanted. I asked her what type of room, or asked both of the girls what type of room that they wanted, and they said they wanted princesses. So I looked everywhere, and this one was just the most pretty elegant one. So I decided since they're gonna be sharing a room and having this bed for a while, then I would go ahead and get this one for them. I opted for the comforter instead of the duvet cover because you guys know if you have duvet covers, which like I have on my bed, they can just be a pain to take on and off. And just in case there are accidentally some accidents, then I don't wanna be washing that thing, you know, all the time. So it's easier just to throw the comforter in there opposed to the, the duvet set as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish making the bed and then see what they think.
So the girls can't sleep unless they have an enormous amount of stuffed animals. So what I plan to do is kind of clean up their room a bit. I put all of their stuffed animals in a big basket in this back corner. So I'm going to put everything back there. And then I'm also going to go through some of their top drawers and try to organize those a bit better. So I did tell y'all that I already had the baby. All of this was pre-recorded, trying to get everything done before he came. And in next week's video, it will be a postpartum clean with me. So I'll be answering all y'all's questions. I'll tell you how labor went. I'll tell you how everything is going up to this point. I had mentioned earlier that one of my big goals was to get Sailor sleeping in this bedroom and then get Savannah in here feeling like it is something new and fresh in her bedroom as well. And after, so it's been about a month that they have been sleeping in their new room. And let me tell you, it has been the best thing ever. I initially thought it was going to be super difficult and that they would keep coming downstairs into our bedroom in the middle of the night but i think just having them together make helps make them feel safe i know that i had asked sailor why she didn't want to stay in her bed earlier and she just said she was scared so having them together makes them feel safe feels like they have someone to sleep with that they're not alone and i'm just in shock how well they have been doing up to this point now the only thing that i could probably be better about is getting them to bed earlier um, I know that school started back up but because my kids were in their preschool they kind of went they got they go all year round but they did move up in their classroom and Sailor started pre-k and then Savannah started preschool so I have to work on getting them to bed quicker I try and start bedroom time routine early but oh my gosh I feel like after they take a bath they are wired. Does anyone else have that issue? Um, our bath time starts between 7 and 7.30 and then I tried to get them in bed by 8.30 but it just, sometimes it just doesn't work. Sometimes it's 9 o'clock and then they're not sleeping till 9.30 and I'm like, and then they don't wake up in the morning. So I don't know, what do you guys do to help get them to bed earlier and you know, especially if they're like wound up after, after their bath. Life is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know If I Let me figure out where the road goes these were extra bathing suits that I had kept in the top drawer along with just some other random stuff that you might have seen. So I went through and anything that was too small for Savannah, then I went ahead and put that away and then everything else that they can still use throughout, you know, the end. I know that summer's like kind of technically over, but it's still 95 degrees here. And we are still out in the sun a lot. This next top drawer just has some really random stuff and these are just extra organizer baskets that I had. The gray ones were from Amazon and they came in a kit with like all different sizes and then the white ones were from Ikea. I had started going through their clothes several months ago so in a lot of my past videos I started cleaning out their clothes or going through the sizes and swapping sizes and merging all of Sailor's and Savannah's clothes into this one dresser. So on the left side was um, is all the shirts. The middle drawer is Sailor's and then that drawer right there is Sailor's as well. She only loves wearing dresses so she has 
like not a lot of shorts and then the bottom drawer is uh, Savannah's she still lets me dress her and is a little less picky so she has a lot more variety of clothes I had these two chairs you know a long long time ago before I was even on here um, I had those gray chairs in our living room and then I had moved them in our dining room and then I moved them upstairs and then I'm just taking one and moving it in here in case I ever want to like read them a book or something and not climb on the bed then it would be easier this wreath I made um, several years ago uh, it matches the other wreath in this room that has like an S on it and uh, that came from Savannah's room so I just added it there as a final touch the very last thing I'm going to do is vacuum and the girls are currently in the bath right now getting their pajamas on so I'm gonna have them come up and see their finished room after that I'll show you guys some of the before and after pictures but I hope you enjoyed today's video be sure you're subscribed if you're not already and if you can't tell by their expressions I think you know that they absolutely love it show me what it's like to be circling among the clouds Cause without you by my side I would be stuck here on the ground You're lighting up the way I can see the road ahead of me I won't be stumbling in the dark Your eyes are shining like the stars I was down Until you saved me Until you set me free My eyes were closed now I see clear as day And I just wanted to say That you can take me high Feels like I can fly But I can't hear the signs you describe Don't be ashamed We can't always leave this place and go where no one knows our names Pack your bags We never needed their permission to believe in ourselves So come with me Spend the weekend doing everything they said we'd never do In their universe, we're just causing trouble But nothing can hurt us in our bubble For better or worse, in an uphill struggle No regrets and windows so today is the day you guys it is not only the organization and transformation of the baby boys nursery but the day this video is released I should also be the same day that I am going into the hospital and having this baby if you haven't seen any early announcements then today should be the day and I'll keep all of y'all updated as best as I can over on my Instagram but in today's video is the entire preparation. So if this is your very first time here, let me explain a little. But first off, thank you all for clicking on this video. And if you are a longtime subscriber waiting for this moment, then I will give you all of the details. My name is Michelle and I'm a mom to two girls already. Sailor is my oldest who is four, about to be five. And then Savannah is now my going to be my middle child and she literally just turned three a couple of weeks ago. I am pregnant with a baby boy, well about to have him and because of that I have been given so many boy clothes. So because this is our probably our last baby, I feel like over the last five years I have been pregnant majority of the time and I like to say just with a few breaks because it takes a while to like get back you know find your routine and then get back to it after having a baby so this is probably our last and a, a lot of my friends are also kind of on their last as well so I have been donated so many clothes which is what I am going through right now and I am certainly so grateful for this 
Having two girls already, I kind of just expected that it was going to be a third girl, which we were totally fine with, and it was shockingly a boy. So obviously I didn't have any clothes, but um, I was like, somebody asked, do you, do you want a couple boy clothes or whatever? And I'm like, sure. And I was just given tubs of clothes. So um, in, this t in today's video, I'm going to be going through several clothes, sorting through sizes, um, you know, pulling out all the newborn sizes, pulling out the three month and so forth, washing everything, organizing everything, putting it into the nursery, and then also transforming the nursery. So I know that is a ton in this video, um, but I just wanted to keep it all together so that you get an idea of all of the prep work and all of the transformation. As far as the nursery transformation goes, if you've been following along, then you know that I have two bedrooms upstairs that the kids are going to take over, which entailed that Savannah, my now middle child, is moving over to her older sister's room. And then that room, which was a like a toddler girl room, is now being transformed into a baby boy nursery. In last week's video is where I started pulling out all the old baby stuff, getting everything washed and prepped. So if you missed that video, that was actually like a clean and nest video. And then this one is all nursery organization and transformation. So if you haven't seen that one, make sure that you check it out so that you get an idea of where I actually started from. But also throughout this video, I'm going to share some organization tips, anything I've learned throughout my other two pregnancies and becoming a mom, what worked, what hasn't, what were some of the things that I used and needed and what I'm doing and changing this third time around. Later on, I'll also share my previous birth experiences and also why I'm getting induced this third time around. But let's go ahead and get started organizing and washing these clothes. To tell the truth No one else can see you like I do All you ever do is Now before I was given a ton of clothes There was a few things that I picked out As well as family members picked out throughout the pregnancy And um, that's what I'm cutting off the tags now And I just thought some of this stuff is super cute Now having a girl and then having a boy is totally different as far as like buying clothes and stuff i feel like girl stuff is there is just so much out there because there's so many different things that can, they can wear and then boy stuff i was like is this cute because a lot of it is like dinosaurs and sports stuff so i'm like what else is out what else out there is there for boys <laughs> But you just have to do some t digging and there is a ton of cute stuff out there. But if you are a seasoned boy mom, then leave me a comment. Any advice that you can give me for raising boys would be appreciated. When we are together, you're afraid to hold my hand. Trying to understand. What if this doesn't go as planned So once I had everything sorted, I, I went in and washed everything once again, and then I only pulled out newborn and zero to three month clothes. So the next thing I'm going to do is work on folding it and putting it into the cube organizers, which then go in the, in the drawer. Now these cube organizers are pretty popular, but I did not use them for sailor nor savannah when they were a baby i actually transitioned to those when they were a little bit older so this is my first time organizing the nursery using these cubes and 
also folding KonMari style. So, you know, if you've been here, you know that I fold KonMari style. I was very hesitant at first. Like, there's no way I'm going to be able to fold all of these clothes, keep up with it, do laundry for four people in our house, and then consistently be able to use this method. But it really is so much easier to do it that way. So whenever you find a great folding style where you can see the clothes, see what you have, easily pick them out, then I would just say stick to it because the little, the extra folds that I have to do initially make it worth it when finding things you need. Now, the way that I learned how to do it is just watching a YouTube video from hers and then like kind of practicing a little bit. So the first couple of tries were like, yeah, this isn't, I'm gonna do this, but it's not gonna stick. And then I, I like to say like I do a sloppy KonMari. So it's not, doesn't look like it just came out of a department store, right? It's just like, let me just fold it. When I speed it up a lot, I think someone asked, why do you roll your clothes? It, I'm not rolling them. It's just really sped up. So <laughs> it looks like I'm rolling them, but it's actually three separate folds. And then I am organizing them into these bins. So what I did here was I took all of the newborn clothes. And then if it was pants, I put them in one organizer. If it was like onesies, I put them in another organizer compartment. And then um, pajamas went in one as well. So they're all separated by category and then I can easily pull something out when I need it. Now, one thing I do not do is color code. Neither do I do that in my own closet because the colors don't matter to me, I guess, as much as the category. Um, like for example, I will organize everything that's, you know, short sleeve pants, whatever. But then the color is just like, I can, because I can so I can see it so easily. It doesn't bother me to have to take that extra step to also color code it. Now, when I did my own closet organization video, which was a complete disaster, um, I did initially at one point try and do the color coding, but I realized that I don't, whenever I'm picking something out to wear, I don't go in there saying, oh, I really want to find a black shirt and wear a black shirt today. I'm like, it's 110 degrees outside. Give me a tank top and what I, any color matches with jean shorts or like leggings. So it doesn't really matter to me to have it color coded. Now, if I wanted it to look really pretty, then I would do it that way. But in real life, the consistency of keeping it up, at least for me and then our kids and you know everyone in our house, I just don't go that extra step. The white organizers that you see there, those are from Ikea. I got them um, several years ago, I wanna say. I had bought extras. They are super cheap. Like, I wanna say just a, a dollar or a couple dollars. I don't I don't remember exactly, because I, I bought a whole bunch at one time, and I was like, eventually I'll use them if I'm not using them right this, you know, right that second. So I already had those, and then the one kinda in the back corner that's gray, those are from Amazon, and when I bought those, I bought those in a package, so they came with uh, a couple different sizes. Now the white ones from our Ikea feel a little bit more solid than the gray ones from Amazon, but the ones from Amazon are, I feel like are a little bit taller. So either of them work perfectly, they fit good into drawers, and it's just kind of up to your own preference, the color you like, the style you like. So on the, now I'm upstairs and gonna start organizing some of these drawers, now that I have all the clothes in there. So everything on the left is gonna be newborn, and then everything on the right is zero to three month. Now, will I use all of these clothes? Probably not. If he's a big baby, he might not even fit into newborn. So I texted my friend and I was like, Oh my gosh, he has enough newborn outfits to wear like 10 a day for a whole month. And she just goes, well, good for blowouts. But I wanted to share with you guys the sponsor of today's video, which I felt was really relevant. 
Because of events that may be going on in your life, especially me about to be postpartum, it can sometimes take us out of balance and out of our normal routine. Mental health is very important, so I wanted to talk to you guys about HapDay, which is the Wellbeing Assistant app. This app is based on science-based techniques that will help you reduce stress and anxiety and feel happy and also improve sleep. There are over 50 personal growth tasks built with therapists, including Wheel of Balance, Create Your Mission, Letter to the Future You, Habit Tracker, a tool to determine the personal mission, meditations, and much more. Now, unlike many of the other apps, HapDay gathers everything in one place. I'm currently using the app to create a priority list of habits that I can do on a daily basis to keep me energized and positive throughout the day. Some of my daily tasks include simple things like brushing your teeth or more important things to me like being sure I listen to a motivating podcast and practicing daily gratitudes. I can schedule them out and get notified of these habit reminders. You can also use the app to remind me of things that are most important, like taking a photo of something that made me really happy that day. Then you can earn a set of points for completing the task each day. Be sure to take care of yourself by downloading the HapDay app using the link below in the description. So now we are moving back to the nursery and I had ordered this light a while ago from overstock.com. I saw one very similar at a place called Birch Lane, which is more of like a high-end store and it was really expensive. So I kind of shopped around for one that was a similar dupe and I came across this one and I am so glad it, it looks so pretty in person. So Chris had taken out the original girly chandelier that was in this room and you'll see in an upcoming video when I show you guys the girls room transformation. But this is the first change we're making and it is such a beautiful statement piece. Yeah, he sets my body in motion. He just, he knows how to turn things up. And he knows what gets me going. Yeah, like a little text saying, hey, what's up? They look at me, I'm in a bad situation. Look at him. Next, we are going to put the crib back together. So we're keeping the original crib and the dresser. I have, this will be the third time around that I'm using the same one. So luckily I got white, which I can turn into either boy or girl, um, but we had lowered it, taken the front off, made it, turned it into a toddler bed. So now we're just transforming it back into a crib. The mattress we had was double-sided as well. So you flip it over whenever it's newborn. I don't know, I don't remember up to what age. And then um, when you flip it over the other way, it turns into like a toddler. So it's a little bit more cushiony. So I'm also making note to flip it back over to the baby side. Yeah, I get that, you got a history. But I don't wanna think about no other than us. Why do I need to be good all the time? I'm wrapped around his finger, but he is mine. Don't care what they say. The next thing that arrived was the new rug. So what I'm gonna do is roll this one up and then transition this one over into the girl's new bedroom. After we had picked up the rug, I did do some shampooing and vacuuming in this area, which I showed in last week's video, but now I'm going to go ahead and open up this rug. So this rug did come in a couple days ago. I have not seen it yet. I wanted to open it up here in the nursery and see what it looks like. I had my eye on it for a, for a while and it's from a place called Miss Amira, which when I did my living room makeover, I also bought two rugs from there and really liked them and decided to go back and order from them again. When putting together the nursery, so this will be my third one to do, I and also the girls' rooms and even our bedroom, one thing I like to do is keep it really simple, like not have a bunch of toys, not have a bunch of stuff on the walls, not overdo it just pick out a few key pieces um, so for me it's always like the lighting the rug and then a few decor pieces and then keep it as simple as possible that way your eye really catches those statement pieces 
Now I am big on rugs and lights, so my eyes are drawn toward my eyes are drawn upwards to see the chandelier and downwards to look at the rug, and then I kind of look at everything else in the room. So it's taken me three times around, but I finally got this Baby Bjorn bouncer. I've heard people rave about it. It's super easy. I thought I'd have to set it up, but I really didn't. I just pretty much took it out of the box and it was ready to go. So if you have it, let me know if you love it in the comments below. Maybe it's something in the water. So this is a changing table I have downstairs. I plan to keep a lot of stuff downstairs so that I can easily get it when I need it. So my next task is to be organizing some of this stuff. The next thing that I've washed and I'm going to sort through that is mostly going downstairs is going to be the swaddle blankets, some bibs, and also the burp cloths and swaddles, swaddlers. So one thing I wanted to point out in case you are a first time mom or becoming a first time mom is that having a baby is such a roller coaster. You have so much love and compassion for this little human and then at the same time, you feel so worried that you're not doing something right. I know that after I had my kids, even though I was like in a room full of people, I felt all alone because I didn't know exactly if I was doing everything the right way. So I, I knew that I wasn't a bad mom or anything like that. I just had these overwhelming feelings like I need to be doing it all and I need to be doing everything and I know my baby better than anyone. And, but then there were times I just wanted to break down and be like, this is so hard. But I've come to the realization that nobody really does have it all together. Once you think you have the perfect routine down, the perfect sleep schedule down, the perfect feeding schedule down, then boom, they're on to the next stage and you have to kind of start all over learning and transitioning into a new routine that works. And I had to send my kids back to daycare or school after I had to go back to work when they were babies, I remember feeling like, oh my gosh, all these other moms have it all together. Like they never forget anything. They have the bottle schedule down. They have, you know, all this stuff down. And then, you know, once I started to get to know a lot of them and talk to them personally, I'm like, oh my gosh, they're on the struggle bus just like me. I think that deep down inside, we know and have realized that not everyone's perfect regardless of what's on social media or regardless of your friends, your peers, the other moms in your school. But sometimes just hearing the story of someone who inspires you and listening to the fact that they struggle as well can be really helpful. Let me feel your love again Cause I've been running round in circles screaming out your name Take me to a different place Just the two of us and we can stay up all night Kissing under street lights Doing what we want to Doing what we need to do Staying up all night Everything is all One thing that I'm doing differently this time around is using clear containers instead of like cute little baskets to store the burp cloths, the swaddlers, and swaddle blankets. I used to have a ton of little cute baskets from Target to store some of this stuff and I decided that it's more functional just to have it in clear bins. And another thing is that I can always reuse these clear bins somewhere else if needed once I no longer need to use it for the baby. You might have saw that changing table earlier. That's actually going to be in our office area. So our office area is downstairs as well as our bedroom. And with the girls, I had everything in our bedroom and it was 
just stuff everywhere. I kind of felt real cluttered in there. I am going to keep the bassinet in there obviously, but then once I started like exclusively pumping before I had pump parts, I had the changing table in there. I had extra clothes because as you know, things got more hectic. I started slowly to stop take ta stop taking everything upstairs when needed. So it just got so overwhelmed and cluttered in there. We also had different bedroom furniture. So I was able to put the changing table on our dresser. And then once we got the dresser that we currently have, it is really tall. So um, it's not easy to change a baby on how tall that dresser is. So anyway, I decided that we would keep like a changing table and all of these this extra stuff kind of downstairs out of the way in the office and then just keep the our bedroom kind of nice and open aside from the bassinet and then I'm sure there'll be stuff that accumulates in there as well and then everything else here in the nursery so some of this stuff I'm going to use a little bit later he doesn't need right when he's born but this is what I'm talking about downstairs this um, changing station table area uh, I borrowed it from my sister and I'm just going to clean it off and then organize it. So as I was sticking with more of the stuff on the clear side, I ended up finding this little thing on Amazon and it is specifically to hold diapers easily. You can put the wipes on the top and then these little baskets can hold stuff like diaper cream or anything extra that you need for a changing station. So instead of piling diapers on the top, since I'm the diapers are going to be like on the bottom part, I can easily just pull them out instead of trying to grab them from the top side. It's also small enough, so I felt like I could move it around if needed. Like if I was changing him somewhere else in the house, I could just carry this little caddy over and it'd be pretty simple to move around. Another new thing I'm trying out are these cootery diapers. So I have gotten like a lot of advertisements on them. I don't personally know anyone who has used them. So if you've used them before, then leave me a comment down below, let me know. And it's supposed to be, they say like the Cadillac of diapers. Now I'm not super picky on which diapers to use. In fact, you know, people have given me a couple different brands that I plan to, to all use, but um, I really wanted to try these out and see how well he did with them as they are they do feel super soft and um, they're supposed to be like really absorbent and comfortable so here I just have some extra of those clear containers that I'm going to add a couple more diapers in again I can just grab some of these containers and move them around the house wherever I may be and then also anything I need to grab several times a day like a burp cloth or maybe a blanket or something then that's all going down here organized as well talk all night we just let the good times pass got caught up in our fights i say i don't mind but that's a lie thought we'd work it out i've tried to let you go memories they tend to stay doesn't matter anyway because it won't be Now I know that I had so many hand-me-downs from both the girls side and from friends but there's just something about wanting to do something from myself for him so I did put in an order to Copper Pearl. I really do like this cute little baby shop where they have just a bunch of cute stuff. So I did go a little bit nautical beachy whale theme for his nursery if you didn't see that earlier so i ordered some like different um, diaper changing pad covers sheets for his bed and then there was this package that came with a bunch of different stuff like the burp cloths a blanket 
um, different bibs. It all came in like this starter pack thing. So I ended up just ordering that specific blue theme and then it all came together. from my window sun's coming up like the day before you're like a stone on my pillow i don't make a sound when i shut the door oh, you don't have to wake up Marathon, KG saxophone We'll order in a bunch of food I'll put your favorite music on All the way baritone Next, I'm going to get everything out of the packaging, unfolded, and washed. And then I'll probably pack some of this stuff in my hospital bag. So I told you that I would share about the birth of the other two, how my labor and delivery went with everything, and... I'm going to share my story and my plan this time around, but keep in mind that everyone's experience is totally different. You and your doctor know what's best for you so you guys can make that decision together. So for both of mine, I chose to be induced at 39 weeks. I was really, really fortunate to not have many complications during either pregnancy. And the only thing that was a little off was my platelet count. So platelets are what help clot your blood. And with both of my pregnancies, well, as well as this one, um, they fall under the, the normal threshold. So a normal person's platelet should be about 150 and mine typically fall in under a hundred and as far as pregnancy goes you don't really notice anything different it's not like you're in extra pain or anything like that but the only thing is that they risk not giving you an epidural which is the medication that helps relieve pain during labor now again my personal preference is that i really really want an epidural i want it my my birth to be peaceful and for me that is without a lot of pain so so for all of my pregnancies I have been seeing a hematologist just to get everything squared away so basically he can count them manually like look under the microscope and and do a better count of what they actually are instead of just the machine reading them and he always gets a little higher number meaning if 100 is the threshold he can count it right at 100 and then he can approve me at the anesthesiologist for the epidural so real quick here, I did get some curtains for the bedroom and I ordered them from Half Price Drapes. They are blackout velvet curtains. I had them with Savannah, which I'm moving those curtains over into Sailor's Room or their shared room. And I really liked them. The ori original ones I got off Amazon, but when I looked at Amazon, they did not have the color that I wanted. So it's always kind of scary picking out curtains because you don't know the exact color like what it looks like online and what it's going to look like in person but I think that the color ended up turning out great and matching the room perfectly but as I was saying and going to make this long story short is that he can it's a lot of work for me to get an epidural but you know I just kind of know last minute and we can schedule it around my last appointment with him and it just makes it a lot easier both of my births were very I would say easy for getting induced, um, no complications. Sailor came, I don't know, within like eight-ish hours from the time I started and then Savannah like came so fast. And both times, again, I was induced and had absolutely no complications and very fast labors. So this time around, I'm scheduling it again, hoping that everything goes as smoothly as the other two labors and hoping that they clear me for the epidural. If not, then I'm just going to have to figure something out and deal with the pain. I know that a lot of you guys do it all the time.
But now I'm finishing up in the nursery. I finally got the last things that I had on order, which included a couple clear shelves that I got from Amazon and then these picture frames that I also got off of Amazon. But lastly, I forgot to mention his name. I get so many questions on that. So we decided on a name like literally a week ago. So when he's born, I will be sure to share a picture of him, his name on my community tab here, and as well as on my Instagram. My life was great till you added color. The different whale prints I ordered off of Etsy and I really love the way that they came out. Now I don't have any like special connection to whales or anything like that. Um, I just really, really like the ocean and water and being around that environment. So anything like oceany or calming is really the vibe I was going for just because that's the kind of environment that I like. This print in particular was more vintage, which was the vibe that I was going for here. You're my heart's desire I just want to love you, just want to hold you Just want to be with you till we grow old Please tell me you'll stay or take me away I want you for myself every single day You say We had painted and put up wallpaper when we made this room for Savannah and the wallpaper is from Anthropology, and it is the real wallpaper. It's not peel and stick or anything like that. So it was Chris said it was a pain to put together <laughs> um, and it would be pretty difficult to remove, but I think that it still is fitting for this room. The paint color I believe is repost gray from Sherman Williams. And it's just a very light neutral color. I feel like the camera still gives it a pretty, pretty accurate color of what it is. What we're doing here is we removed the smaller bookcase. I had actually painted that a very light pink. Um, I had gotten that from Ikea and painted it. So we are swapping that out and putting in these two clear acrylic bookshelves. Now, one thing I was worried about was Savannah giving up her bedroom for the baby. I didn't want her to feel like she was getting replaced or anything. So we kept her a part of the transition and transformation. And she is helping us pick out the books that she wants to give to her baby brother so that he can read in his room. I've noticed that transitioning from one to two kids or two or more, um, well, I'm not there yet, but as long as they feel very involved in the process, um, then all of my fears about them getting jealous or feeling left out is, is not really accurate. It's just a, one of those mom guilts or one of those mom fears, but I've noticed with both of them, the transition has been awesome. They are so excited, just as excited as I am, if not even more excited, you know, and knowing that they're still loved regardless if you bring a new baby into the world or not. But I'm going to go ahead and finish putting a few last minute things together and then I will give you the full nursery tour. Thank you guys so much for all your support and sticking with me through this entire video. 
And if you're not subscribed, I would love for you to subscribe so that you can get all of the upcoming makeovers as well as more videos coming out soon. Just wanna be with you till we grow old Just tell me you'll stay or take me away I want you for myself every single day You set my world on fire You set my world on fire Show me what it's like to be circling among the clouds Because without you by my side I would be stuck here on the ground You're lighting up the way I can see the road ahead of me I won't be stumbling in the dark Your eyes are shining like the stars I was down until you saved me, until you set me free My eyes were closed, now I see clear as day And I just wanted to say that you can take me high Feels like I can fly You can take me high I can see the sun staring at you when you make that smile I'm moving closer to you now I can't get close enough somehow And I was down Until you saved me Until you set me free My eyes were closed Now I see clear as day And I just wanted to say That you can take me high Feels like I can fly Three. I don't need anybody I don't need anybody else No one will ever take me No one will ever take me away from you I promise I will hold on to you I don't know what I'd do Without you Without you You can take me high Feels like I can fly You can take me high Feels like I can fly can take me high